Welcome to the Heyrich House Museum. Follow us inside as we show you a few of the important pieces in our collection. The Heyrich House Museum was the family home of Christian Heyrich, a local brewmaster born in Germany who had immigrated to the United States in 1866 when he was 24 years old. The home was built in 1894 and decorated by his second wife, Matilda Dietz Heyrich. Built as the first fireproof residence in Washington, D.C., it's made of poured concrete and metal, not an internal wood structure. While Christian wasn't afraid of fires, he had had a series of fires at his brewery located a few blocks south of the house and decided that he didn't want to risk having additional fires at his own home. When the Heyrich family decided to build their house in DuPont Circle, they knew that, while it didn't yet have all the infrastructure needed for a new, modern home, the area would eventually have it. DuPont Circle was becoming the it neighborhood to move into, and Christian decided to build his home with an electric hookup, even though electricity wasn't yet in the area. Many of the light fixtures in the house, including this one, are electroliers, which incorporate gas chutes on the top and electric bulbs on the bottom. Before the electricity was reliable, the Hyrex used the gas chutes to light the different rooms, and then once they had the electricity stable in the home, they would use the electric bulbs instead. This allowed them a little more versatility, and while it wasn't exactly fireproof, the family didn't have any issues related to the gas lines and electric lines running next to each other. This piano, a 1901 Steinway Model C, was purchased by Christian Heyrich as a gift for his third wife, Amelia Heyrich, upon the birth of their first child, Christian Jr. Originally in ebony black color, it was sent out by the family to be repainted as we see it today. The piano was recently restored to playable condition, and we now do have performances that involve the piano being played by professionals or audiences in the nearby rooms. This is one of the more unique pieces in the museum's collection. Amelia, who was a bit of a spiritualist, would incorporate Michael, a Cathay Cruz porcelain doll, into the family's dinner service on occasion. If there were ever 13 people seated at the table, that was considered an unlucky number, so Amelia would pull up a chair and Michael would join the family for dinner. This fountain was added to the family's conservatory in the 1920s, dedicated to their daughter, Anna Marguerite, who had died at the young age of nine months. The image at the top is a clear likeness of Anna Marguerite and was used to help the family commemorate her during their life. While the Heyrich family home was built as a fireproof residence, there were 15 fireplaces throughout the house. While they could have been used, there is no evidence that they ever were. The family had an internal coal-fire heated system that heated the house, because the fireplaces are so intact, some of our collection includes beautiful and pristine firebacks. This one, made by Elihu Vetter, an American artist, features Apollo, the sun god. This desk was purchased by the family in 1902. Family lore has it that the desk was made for Ulysses S. Grant to commemorate his second inaugural term and the founding of Yosemite National Park in 1872. However, it went into government storage as Congress did not want to pay the shipping costs for accepting the desk. The family found it at a government auction, and Christian Heyrich, being very sentimental, decided to purchase it. When Christian Heyrich moved to Washington, D.C., he wasn't yet a citizen. Once he became an American citizen, he didn't have voting rights, as Washington, D.C. didn't have any until the 1960s. The one time he was allowed to vote was in the first election of Ulysses S. Grant, for whom he cast his vote. Christian had been working in Kansas City on a farm and was able to vote at that point in time. Christian purchased this desk potentially to commemorate that vote and his American citizenship. When he was offered a title back in Germany, he turned it down, saying that if Germany was his mother and America his bride, he'd have to choose his bride. This desk is a great example of Christian's American pride. Christian Heyrich was trained as a brewer from a young age. Having worked at breweries in Germany and Austria, he finally immigrated to the United States at the urging of his sister in 1866 when he was 24 years old. He eventually established a brewery in Washington, D.C., naming it the Christian Heyrich Brewing Co. in 1873. That brewery would go on to become the most prolific brewery in Washington, D.C.'s history. He also became the largest private employer in the District of Columbia. These bottles, a few of them from his brewery, are an example of the different brewing, bottling, and packaging processes throughout Christian's life. Not only did he establish his own bottling plant, but he also used his nephew's bottling plant, the Arlington Bottling Company, which was located in Georgetown, near Christian's brewery. Christian Heyrich often traveled back to his hometown of Heine, Germany. In 1914, he located this suite of furniture that was built by artisans from his hometown and incorporated the history of Heine. Also incorporated are mythical creatures. Christian purchased the suite of furniture and had it installed in his Washington, D.C. home. Included in that suite is this large hutch, as well as a grandfather clock located on the first floor. One of the last updates done by the Heyrich family to their home was an update to their kitchen. 
Around 1939, the family purchased a new electric range by General Electric and had it installed here in the kitchen. They also purchased a metal countertop and had that installed. These updates show the importance of technology and how Christian and his family appreciated the need for newer, updated items throughout their house. Some of our most valuable resources in our collections include Amelia Hyrick's journals. Amelia Hyrick, Christian's third wife, kept detailed records of her daily activities, the family's activities, their travels, and their time visiting their Maryland farmhouse. These journals and diaries are great resources for us as we entertain visitors and guests, educate our staff and volunteers, as well as plan programming related to the family life here in the Hyrick House Museum. Thank you for coming with us to the Hyrick House Museum. While these are just a few of the items we have on display, we encourage you to come and visit the museum so that you can learn more about the Hyrick family and their legacy here in Washington, D.C.